Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and I just wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about smear campaigning. For those of you who are not aware, smear campaigning is when someone tells lies about you um, to try to make you look bad. It's like spreading rumors, gossiping, this kind of thing. Smear campaigning is a childish behavior that can have very adult consequences. We see it on playgrounds and with school children all the time. It's an immature attempt to control the way that other people see somebody or an attempt to get them in trouble by somehow trying to make them look bad or saying they did something wrong. Even children can create negative consequences when they engage in this behavior. They can create negative consequences for teachers, for their parents, for themselves, for other children. And smear campaigning from adults can result in some pretty nasty things happening. People have lost their jobs. They've lost custody of their children. They've gone to jail. People have lost their lives. Smear campaigning is very hurtful. But just remember two things. Number one, people will eventually see the toxic person for who they really are. And number two, just because people seem like they're listening doesn't mean they believe the toxic person or that they agree with them. It's important to remember that most people do not want to get involved with somebody else's drama and they don't want to be seen as causing problems. So often they will not speak out against a smear campaign. This doesn't mean they agree with the toxic person or that they believe them. Think of how many times you were the recipient of gossip or rumors and innuendo, and even though you didn't agree or you didn't believe it, you didn't say anything to contradict the gossiping person. It happens all the time. You didn't want to get involved. Everybody else is the same. They don't want to get involved either. It's important to remember that a toxic person's characterization of you does not define you, and people will see the other for who they are eventually. This might not happen in time to save your relationship with those people, but if someone is willing to believe things about you without even speaking to you about it, you probably didn't have that healthy of a relationship with them to begin with. So if you find yourself dealing with smearing and smear campaigns in toxic relationships, hopefully here are some things that will help you to deal with that a little better. Someone saying untrue things about you can be hurtful and it can even be dangerous depending on what they're saying. If you have legal recourse to stop or address any type of smearing, this may really be worth looking into. The majority of the time, however, there's little that can really be done to stop someone from saying things that are not true. If you find yourself in this situation, Number one, stay away from the toxic person as much as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't speak to them at all if you can. No looking on their Facebook page. Just go no contact as much as you possibly can. Number two, instruct other people not to talk to you about anything that the toxic person says or does, especially if it's about you. Just stop telling me the things that this person is saying. I don't want to know. Number three, stop trying to keep track of what they're saying about you if you can't change it. All that does is needlessly upset you because there's nothing you can do about it. You can't stop them. Number four, as we said, address the smearing legally if you can. In some situations, you can. If you can't, don't become overly focused on proving that, that the toxic person is wrong. This is only hurtful to you and it can actually backfire really badly even if you're right. Validating lies by addressing them often only makes matters worse. Sometimes it might be necessary. So you're going to have to use your judgment when it comes to that. Remember the most important thing. The people who truly know you and love you, generally, they're not going to believe a smear campaign. As always, going no contact with this person is going to be your best bet. So I hope that clears a few things up for you. If you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that because I take appointments online over the phone, via text, via messenger, through email, and through Skype worldwide. We teach workshops, seminars, and clinics throughout the year. You can visit littleshaman.org to see what's going on with that as well.
May the Great Spirit bless you. Have a beautiful day.